This video is practical and straightforward guide on evaluating the learning effectiveness of your training and development program and showing the value to the management or sponsors. Let's get started. Here is the drill. Sooner or later, you will be asked to measure the learning and development program, evaluate its success or make some recommendations for improvement for existing training. Unfortunately, many people don't bother to evaluate a training program or if they measure something, it is just a short survey at the end of the program. This is a big mistake and let me tell you why. A company I know used to have five days leadership program, hotel, catering, great speakers, high training, satisfaction scores from participants. When the time came to do some budget cuts, the leadership program was first out. The thing is, there was no proof that the leadership program actually developed leaders. The impact on the business wasn't measured. There was no information about the impact to justify the huge training expense. That is why measuring learning it is essential. You could have shown, for example, how the leadership program resulted in more internal promotions, which obviously positively impacts any company and it definitely boosts employee engagement. You could have also shown cost saving by hiring from within. You could have shown better business results if you had measured them. Let's start with Kirkpatrick model, which is the most famous one. Donald Kirkpatrick developed the four levels of evaluation model in 1950s. Today is the most widely used model for measuring training. The four levels are Level 1 is reaction, participant reaction to the training. There is a good chance you have completed earlier a survey after face-to-face -face training or even after online program. This is known as level 1 evaluation. The idea is to get insight into the training experience from the learner's perspective. Level 1 evaluation can help you to improve training delivery and participants by you. It can also help you to spot issues such as bug in e-learning program. Level 2, which is evaluation, measures skills and attitudes developed as a result of training. Here is we want to ensure that participants learn what they should have learned. Examples include post-test simulations or hands-on assignments. Suppose you have people, for example, who attended a training on how to run effective meetings. In this case, you might need to create an example of effective meeting agenda as a part of level two evaluation. Level three looks at whether participants applied the training back on the job. Examples include surveys, on-the-job observations and quality inspections. For example, a level three for a meeting management class might be a survey to ask participants what new skills they have implemented and used. Level four results. We are talking here about business results achieved because of the training. Level four assess whether the training program goals are met. In other words, what are business results have been achieved? For example, a business goal for a meeting uh, management class might be to reduce the time people spend on meetings by 15%. Do you see it happen or no? Now let's talk about flaws of Kirkpatrick's model. The first one is isolation. The model works best when training outcomes are relatively isolated from other factors. It might not be the best model for customer service training if customers are upset about defective product and this is something outside of the participant's control, right? Second one is degree of accuracy when you isolate the effects of training from other factors. For example, participants might do well in a post-assessment test because the training was great or because they already knew the answers and the material before. So should you do pre and post tests to actually see what participants learn in the training versus what they already know? Pre-testing participants might eliminate the need for training altogether if they can pass the test before attending the training. On the other hand, it takes extra work to isolate the impact of training by doing things like pre or post testing. So it's not always worthwhile to invest in this extra step. 
the best to use the model is to start at the level four and identify what you want to achieve then work backwards to level three to think about what participants need to do differently on the job to achieve those results and so on then think about the learning you want to participants to acquire and finally what reaction you want them to have this will make it easier to connect the training to the organizational goals the second and most famous model for measuring learning is the Philips ROI model. Uh, Jack Phillips developed the ROI to add a financial component to training evaluation. He did this by building on the Kirkpatrick's model. He basically added to um, level zero, which represents program inputs, the number of people have attending the training, the cost uh, of the training, the cost of, of the designing the training, the participants' wages, and so on. He also added level five, which is ROI, to identify the financial impact of the training program. Let me know in the comments if you are interested to see an actual example of calculation with numbers and explanations so I can record the video about it. Kirkpatrick's four levels of evaluation and Philips ROI methodology are the most well-known training evaluation models. Okay, the last model I want to talk today is the success case uh, method. It was developed by Robert Brinkerhoff to address the common challenge. In many training programs, only some participants do much better than others. Here are the results of typical training program. The success case method is there to identify what people on the right side of the curve are doing differently so we can get everyone to basically do it too. So this model addresses to a quite common problems. Participants don't always implement everything that they learn in the training. This leaves value on the table. Second, there are always uh, factors outside of participants' control that make it difficult for them to take advantage of the training they received. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please share it with your friend or your co-worker who might benefit from it. For more learning and development tips, please check and follow my Instagram channel. I share a lot of tips there and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.